Hi there. How's your money? We're back again with yours truly, Crypto Queen. In today's video, we're going to talk about the lawsuit regarding the Securities and Exchange Commission, or SEC in short, versus fintech startup Ripple Labs. In January, Ripple filed its defense against the SEC's suit against the company over its offering of XRP, which the SEC says amounted to the offering of unregistered securities. In filing its defense, Ripple Labs made an excellent point worthy of discussion. Why should the SEC consider XRP a security, when the likes of BTC and ETH have remained free from SEC scrutiny? The SEC bombshell lawsuit against fintech startup Ripple Labs is now a cause celebre in the cryptocurrency community, but its sweeping implications about regulatory overreach against innovation is provoking principled debates in some of the country's most influential policy circles. The company ferociously disputes the allegations by making clear that the regulatory agency allowed billions of XRP tokens to circulate freely on global cryptocurrency exchanges for seven years without making such a determination, despite being asked in public and in private for that specific clarity for years. The SEC also alleges that XRP's only utility is to be an investment contract in Ripple, and that all XRP holders depend on Ripple's actions to obtain a return on their holdings. The suit seeks to enjoin the registration of XRP as a security and preclude Ripple's executives from participation in the market. With the SEC's action, the value of XRP has plummeted, some 50 exchanges delisted or suspended trading XRP, and the currency lost 75% of its value. Many of these individuals, app developers, organizations, businesses, and others swear that they had never heard of Ripple prior to the case and never saw XRP as an investment contract in any company. Prior to the SEC's action, XRP was openly traded on more than 200 currency exchanges. Many countries are developing digital currencies, some of which may utilize the XRP ledger. The World Economic Forum noted XRP as the most relevant cryptocurrency for central banks. Financial regulatory authorities in Japan, Singapore, the UK, Switzerland, and the UAE have already declared that XRP is a currency, not a security. XRParcade.com notes some 360 different kinds of organizations which use the currency as a means of exchange including wallets, marketplaces, money transfers, banks, and more than 150 consumer apps. Some firms pay international employees through XRP, and consumers use it to buy groceries and to subscribe digitally to magazines. The SEC said nothing in response to these events which would indicate that XRP is not a currency and that Ripple was not in compliance. Former SEC Chair Joseph Grunfest implored the agency to not proceed with the case, warning that it would cause multi-billion dollar losses to innocent third parties. Carol Goforth of University of Arkansas School of Law argued that the SEC is in the right with its determination, but displayed untoward behavior and timing against Ripple. Goforth observes that the value of XRP is derived, at least in part, by the efforts of Ripple. However, she is appalled by the SEC's treatment, noting that it waited years to issue the ruling. A similar fate could befall Bitcoin and Ethereum, which are by no means safe from being redefined by regulators. On December 22, 2020, the SEC announced that it was taking action against Ripple Labs and two of its executives, co-founder Christian Larson and CEO Bradley Garlinghouse, over the offering of unregistered securities to the tune of over $1.3 billion. In January, Ripple filed its defense to the claims made by the SEC. At its core, Ripple is not attacking the SEC's Howey analysis, rather, they are arguing that the SEC was obligated to give Ripple notice that it was violating U.S. securities law before filing its suit, which would be the fair notice defense. However, Ripple does make one argument in particular that is worthy of attention. The SEC's filing, based on an overarching legal theory amounts to picking virtual currency winners and losers as the SEC has exempted Bitcoin and Ethereum from similar regulation. Throughout the filed defense letter, the Ripple Labs team makes several comparisons to BTC and Ethereum, 
and asks for clarity regarding why both of those digital currencies, especially Ethereum, are not considered securities even though Ethereum's initial offering has several similarities to Ripple's initial offering. When it comes to regulators, the absence of a stance with regard to a particular product or activity is not an indication that it is permitted. For instance, we only discovered that the SEC considers Ripple's XRP offering to be unlawful because it eventually took action against it. However, in the case of BTC and ETH, the SEC has made statements indicating that they currently consider both of those products to be within the bounds of the law. Director of the SEC's Division of Corporation Finance Bill Hinman said that if the network on which the token or coin is to function is sufficiently decentralized, where purchasers would no longer reasonably expect a person or group to carry out essential managerial or entrepreneurial efforts, the assets may not represent an investment contract. Regarding Bitcoin and Ethereum, he said that he did not see a central third party whose efforts are a key determining factor in the enterprise. The network on which Bitcoin functions is operational and appears to have been decentralized for some time, perhaps from inception. This statement shows that the notion of decentralization has played a significant part in the SEC's to this point choice not to consider BTC or ETH securities. The SEC's apparent double standard between BTC and ETH on the one hand and XRP on the other is not an indication that XRP isn't a security but it's an indication that BTC and ETH are. Like XRP, neither of those projects can be properly described as decentralized. Investors in XRP were relying on the work of others to ensure the success of Ripple, while those who buy BTC and ETH are relying on the actions of a concentrated group of core developers to develop and maintain the network. It's certainly possible that the SEC themselves are still teasing out the boundaries of which offerings are subject to SEC regulation, and which are not. However, there is some reason to question why at least ETH has managed to avoid drawing the ire of the SEC, when in reality, it meets the Howey test and the SEC's focus on decentralization. In their SEC case, Ripple want to show that the likes of BTC and ETH are SEC compliant, and that because Ripple is in largely the same position as those two assets, it was a signal that XRP is too. If the SEC are going to punish Ripple, then they should be punishing those responsible for BTC and ETH as well. It's an astute point made by Ripple, albeit unintentionally, but it won't save them. It does highlight that sooner or later, the SEC will have to revisit the BTC and ETH question, applying the same standards they used to take action against Ripple, action against those two projects is long overdue. It will be interesting to see if Ripple Labs' continuous mention of Ethereum and the Ethereum Foundation will lead to the Ethereum Foundation and the ETH ICO being re-examined by the SEC. Only time will tell. So in short, that is all the news regarding our beloved Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies today, straight away from yours truly, the Crypto Queen. Before you leave, make sure you click the like button, share the video, leave a comment down below, and subscribe so you may get notified on our latest videos. Have a great one, and bye.